right, welcome to Far North Tactical's Saturday morning wake-up call. Joining us in the studio this morning from Far North Tactical, it's Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. And uh, from uh, Big Horn Enterprises, we have Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Steve. And I am Steve Floyd, the man of the face made for radio, here today to make sure that all the buttons get pushed. <laughs> what happens if I push this one here? I have no clue, but I've heard you push a few buttons on your other show, too. <laughs> That's the job. It's all part of the job, just trying to find the buttons and push them. All right, gentlemen, you ready to go float the river today? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've been talking about that before the show here. The uh, poor fellow who got a DUI for navigating the China River, <laughs> navigating, I don't know, American waterways or something, Alaskan waterways. So some dude floating down the China River. In a raft. In a raft, non-motorized. And did besides, even, wait, did he even have paddles? I don't even know if he had paddles. No one said, there was nothing in the story that said there was any way of propulsion besides his feet or hands or puking. Very hard. So he decides he wants to indulge in a little bit of adult beverages on the open waterways. And apparently some good citizen out there. Reported him, and he got <laughs> hauled to jail for a DUI. And, well, that's just funny. But, of course, they did it to protect him and to save him. Of course, they had to fine him $2,500 to get out of jail. And he, I think he had to stay there a couple of days. Now he's going to lose his license. I'll have to get an SR-22. I wonder if they impounded his um, raft. It's probably impounded and already getting on a plane to go on a sheep hunt right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're not. You're not implying no. that the law enforcement would take no. take his raft and use it for their own personal. No, not use. them. I mean, right. some other mean person might. Anyway, so this guy's minding his own business, hurt no one. Some goody two shoe jerk calls the cops on him. Six of them, I think. Was it six cops went and picked him up, threw his butt in jail. They should have tased him. I think they should have shot him, especially if he had an oar. They could or, have beat him to death. Or a baseball bat, maybe a right. wiffle bat. The oar is a lot like a bat. It, it does we, look like a bat. We shoot people for bats. Oh, we shoot them, should shoot them for oars. Definitely for drunken floating. Anyways, so it's been pretty funny watching, reading in the news miner, the um, comment. comment section. A bunch of the people are like outraged. Oh, this is a police abuse, and this is why we need... More laws or something. I don't know. This is why something or other, you know, they don't really have anything to say except for this is wrong for It's obviously reason. ridiculous that a guy got a DUI in a raft. Right, it is. But then some joker who, I don't know if he's law enforcement or was stand-up for him or whatever, had a really good point. He said law enforcement has the right to enforce any statute on the books. That's what you pay us to do. That's why we're here. That's what you people want. I love so, the look on Aaron's face because <laughs> I, I wish people could see the look on the face. It says so much more than any words possibly could. However, this is radio, and we do need actual I'm words. I'm pretty sure my <laughs> face was saying is, that's not what I want. <laughs> His face pooped himself. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's basically you just go home now. That's what you want, isn't it? what everyone wants i mean we're all st st looking at each other we're all stunned here because i mean when you think about it that's what we want well sure it is the guy got nailed for he I mean he's obviously a dangerous criminal he must something. have been doing something wrong he, well, he brought it on himself he got too drunk whatever the moral of that story that josh is trying to bring out i think is that law enforcement isn't doing anything outside of what what we consented to in the first place right they're just doing their job. I mean, how is that any different? We made a jab at the Anchorage cops just a second ago with the oar and the baseball bat, but unfortunately... For anyone, for anyone who doesn't know, Anchorage police killed yet another citizen yesterday morning. Uh, this time, he, they say he had a baseball bat. No other witness except police, law enforcement at this point, to verify the story. But they say he came at them with a baseball bat, and so they had to kill him. Even the media is kind of questioning that one, because... There's been a slew of police killings in Anchorage. Not, not not killings of police, but killings by police. No, I understand. All right. Well, you said police killings. That sounds like, you know. All right. 
I'd probably shoot someone if they came at me with a bat, if I really thought it was going down. But uh, I'd go to jail. You also don't pack around mace, batons, and tasers. Which, by the way, tasers are very effective. Hmm. What it, unless they're on drugs. These I've heard about these drugs. People oh, get up all hyped up on drugs and you, know, you just, just you can't bath salts You style. just can't stop these people unless you shoot them dead, Aaron. Two in the chest and one on the head. Bang bang. They're no longer bang. human. They're zombies. You need to... man. <laughs> I don't know, it's just uh, I thought with that whole story with it's so ridiculous. It's so stupid. But the guy I forget which what his name was on there, but he has a point. It's what we've asked for. It's what we want. We want our protection. We want to be protected from nanny or by nanny. So here's your protection. Protect and serve this. Bang. Yep. That's what government protecting and serving the crap out of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, you get that. Yeah, do you do you see these do you see these incidents as related? I mean, you've got the Anchorage police, perhaps a little overzealous in their self protection, shooting people that have been speeding or using bath salts or just carrying a baseball bat. Maybe he was on the way to a game. I don't know. Uh, had a baseball bat, so they had to kill him. Uh, you've got that going on down in Anchorage. Up here, you've got uh, police hauling people off the river for being drunk. When I mean, isn't it the main reason why most people float the river? Is yeah. that they can pretty much get completely wasted my while boys, they're floating? Yeah, my boys and I were fishing on China been a couple of weeks ago when it was actually sunny, and I think we saw, I don't know, three or four rafts of guys go by, and they were all getting down on the brewskis. Yeah, I, I did c- call the cops on them, but did you, well, nothing yeah, happened. Only, only if you're a good citizen Gosh. would you call the cops to make sure that you... <laughs> There's up. somebody out here drinking. You should have done a citizen's arrest and just lit him up and sent him <laughs> The only reason I did was like, hey, me? No, yeah, you didn't They me. wouldn't share. So what do you think would happen if you did a citizen's arrest on him? That's interesting. What, what if somebody tried to do a citizen's arrest on you? I'd knock him out. In a drunken stupor. Which is why we give police guns in the first place. Oh, right. Yeah. So they can the monopolized use of force so that they can take care of the problem. Because obviously, you know, people out there zombified on bath salts floating the river with baseball bats. And beer. Now, it's just a pretty interesting story. I, this thing is loud. Huh? I think it's your, it's your, it's your can. So yeah. yeah, he's on bath salts. Well, he said he's too hot. <laughs> no, he's, hot. <laughs> Anyways, it just, uh, it's a, something for us to think about, I think. It's exactly what we've asked for. You get what you, well, you don't get what you pay for, but you get what you, you reap what you sow. And this is what we've sown. We've asked to be taken care of from cradle to grave. Well, they're going to take care of you the best way they know how, which is any way they feel. The cop does have the right to enforce every statute on the book. It's not just a right, it's a duty, isn't it? Oh, yes. He has a duty to enforce because otherwise it would be favoritism. I mean, if he only enforced certain laws... The ones that say produced fines, then <laughs> then, then 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 you you, well, you he, could say that it's favoritism. Which and that one doesn't un- have a fine hooked up to it now, though? It's all state <laughs> revenue. But if you think about uh, reverse that little role there, what if a guy had drowned? Then we would he'd be in the paper that drunk guy drowned and somebody called the cops but they didn't show up. Blah blah blah. Then the whole town would be going. Aah! Why aren't they doing their job? They should have been out there saving his life. What do we pay these people for? So it's just uh, probably mm-hmm. a catch-22 either way for the police, and it's pathetic either way for the citizens. Was it last spring or was it a year ago when that fellow jumped on the ice floe and floated down the river and had a whole bunch of people calling for him to be rescued? Yeah, it was last spring, I think. When he didn't want to be rescued. He was just enjoying the float. He's like he didn't get shot right off of that thing. But, yeah, you have all these, quote, concerned citizens, unquote, calling the police. There's somebody floating on the ice floe. They need to rescue him. Yeah, I'm kind of tired of concerned citizens worrying about what I do or my safety. It would be a lot better off if people just mind their own business. I'll mind mine. You mind yours. That doesn't work out very good for the Nazis. 
Oh, there are no more Nazis. There's no more Nazis. Oh, oh, no. oh sorry. Just the only Nazis out there are the Nazi zombies. They need to be eliminated. <laughs> I've killed a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> Every night. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know where we're going from there, but I just thought it was ironic. Well, philosophically, dial it back a little bit. Where does this come from? Where where do where do we get this concept that somehow the police have a duty to go out there and enforce every jot and tittle of every single ridiculous regulation that has ever been written? Where does that come from? I mean, it, 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 is it something that's based in... Ancient law? Is it something that's... I mean, no, it's based on consent. See, because we vote people in that pass laws, and these laws are enforced by cops. We 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 automatically give it legitimacy because we did it to ourselves. We asked for it. The laws are put on the uh, books. I were, didn't ask for it. I didn't vote for these people who well, are... Well, sure you did. Have you somebody ever, might have. have. Have you ever voted, Steve? I've voted, but I've lost. I mean, the people that I voted for lost. Then you voted for it. <laughs> So even though I voted against the people that passed these laws, I'm somehow responsible for these laws? Well, sure. Well, Just I by participating we, we in the you, system? We heard you went down the road of <laughs> gambling. <laughs> so, oh, wait, wait. Now you're, saying, now you're likening it to gambling, that if I go into a casino and I put money on the table and I lose, I have no right to complain of having lost. Well, if I say that uh, our political process works, right, if I assume that it does, and I go vote for John McCain, and Obama gets elected. How can I complain about what Obama does? My favorite thing is when... Uh, it's a 50-50. We tell people that we don't want to vote, and they shouldn't vote or whatever. We choose not to, and we would think that they ought to consider not voting. So with the casino analogy, shooting the craps there, so you throw your money down, you lose. This, this is what the analogy is. These people that get all bent out of shape, and I mean, they freak out. I'm not going to vote. I mean, literally, they act, they, yeah, they're Yeah, they upset. You look at their face. It is. And they get all contorted and, and distraught because I think it does. It, it jeopardizes their sense of well-being that somehow what they're doing is right. Yeah. It'd, it'd be as if the gambler came to the non-gambler and said, why aren't you gambling? Yeah, you go outside because you lost. And get in here. I wouldn't have lost if it wasn't for you. Well, you shouldn't have gambled in the first place. I mean, all the voting, all the laws, no one can, you can't complain. The only way you can complain legitimately is if you didn't vote. That's my personal opinion. If you did vote, you got what you asked for. All right, I lost customers over the store when I, uh, well, I didn't actually put the wrong Paul sign up. I don't know who did. People just put me. signs up at my store. It's <laughs> funny. Anyway, the so Ron Paul sign got put up and people would come in. That would tell me that they loved Ron Paul, but I needed to take the signs down because a vote for Ron Paul was a vote for Obama. And people would get so mad at me that I wouldn't agree with that. that they would storm out, and I haven't seen them since. Yeah, that's kind of a... And just, since then, I've been expressing the willingness to not vote at all, and that's getting the same reaction, probably more angry. Oh, yeah, more Because so. if I don't vote, then I'm voting for Obama, which I didn't don't quite get that. So wait, now a vote for Obama is a vote for Obama. A vote for anybody but the people that they tell you to is also a vote for Obama. And if you don't vote, that's a vote for Obama. He's going to win. Well, no, anyway, I look at it. <laughs> but you have to realize why they're saying that because they're saying there's only two choices. Yeah, both. You got the stall. All all, that's all they're saying is there's only two choices. And this is what this is a perfect analogy because this is exactly what it is. You're the cow. And we've talked about the farm and the cattle give me the milk. You're the cow standing at two stalls. You can walk in the stall right or stall left. At the end of both stalls, there's one slaughterhouse. They both lead to the same place. Stall in. Stall in. <laughs> <laughs> They'll come out. <laughs> oh. No, it is, it's, uh, it's been an interesting time actually vocalizing you're not going to vote and why. And, you know, what's really funny is the people on the left, because I've heard some, well, if you vote for anyone but Obama, then that's a vote for Mitt Romney. And the people on the other side say, well, a vote for anyone but Romney is a vote for Obama. Well, who's right? I guess I'm just... But that analogy only comes from there being two choices. If we don't vote, then we're actually voting for both of them. I said, well, oh. it, still, it still cancels itself out. How about you vote for... Well, I'll vote for Obama. No, and you I vote get for to vote Mitt for Romney. Obama. Fine. <laughs> And I will hold my nose and vote for Mitt Romney, 
and then we'll cancel each other out, <laughs> and we can make everybody happy. And if I go in and I show up to the vote and I write in Mickey Mouse <laughs> as a protest vote, <laughs> Winston. What I mean, what would ha- what would happen if a whole bunch of people well, and I a, and I'm just theoretically that's a vote for Obama. But what what if a whole bunch of people, like enough people, so that it's a majority of votes, wrote in Mickey Mouse, a non-candidate, and Mickey Mouse actually won? Don't you have to what legally they, get on the ballot first, though? Can a write-in win on a national election? Well, what, do you have to, like, show a birth certificate or something? And then <laughs> I don't on know. The... No. <laughs> no. How about this? A vote for Obama is a vote for Romney, and a vote for Romney is a vote for Obama. It's the same thing. They're equal, one and o- all. Obamni. One's a socialist fascist, and the other one's a fascist socialist. So <laughs> Even guys like Glenn Beck who are pushing them like nobody's business will admit throughout the day on their shows that Are you going to protest horrible. when he comes? Who? Glenn. Glenn? I'd yeah, like he's... to throw poop at him if I could. <laughs> I'm going to hold signs up. I'm going to do you? something. When he... Oh, yeah. Definitely. Got mm. to. Got you know. So, wait, is this going to be a protest like the Chick-fil-A thing? You're going to go out and have a, a Glenn Beck kiss in or something? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about, uh, I saw this, uh, what's it? Mitt was over there in Israel this last week, right? And uh, he's doing his little prayer walk. <laughs> Some of the pictures, you can see that he's actually smiling, right? He's up at the Wailing Wall, holding his hand on there, putting the piece of paper in there, whatever. And all these hundreds of cameras are around him. There's some uh, Jewish figures there, uh, rabbis, I'm sure. And one of the particular pictures in particular, you can see him smirking. And I don't understand why the rest of the world doesn't see those kinds of things, or America, anyways. Conservative Republicans don't see that. And what I thought about when I saw that was, you remember when uh, Obama was, uh, see, so got to be president, he went over to Saudi Arabia and he bowed to that prince or king, Saudi king or prince or whatever, and the right went nuts. How dare a president? Uh, we don't bow to anyone, blah, 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 which is crap. What the heck was Mitt Romney doing in Israel but bowing down to them? That's exactly what he was doing. He was kowtowing to another nation, hoping to get support. No, no, no. He wasn't bowing to. He was bowing to God, Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. He was. He was. But he was paying respect to the God how, of the Bible. How much do you think that has to do with um, Glenn? Um, A lot. Glenn Beck. Definitely. He wants Glenn Beck to endorse him. He already has. Well, you understand what I'm saying. Glenn Beck has reservations about him. Glenn Beck says on his own show, I will drag my feet to the polls to vote for this man. I don't believe him. I think he's just trying to backpedal because he was so much against him because he wanted uh, Michelle Bachman in the very beginning, who was so dumb. Dumb. Well, well, couldn't believe anyone could back her. My my point is, is he always harps on um, coming out in support of Israel, right? Right. And then all of a sudden Mitt Romney decides that Take this hermitage to Israel and make this big show out of it. Oh, they all do. Everyone goes to Israel. Think Obama. Did Obama go? No, he hasn't. No, no. He, hasn't he went yet. to Saudi Arabia. Right. <laughs> Just, no, I'm saying, I mean, it's, he's it's, still bowing down. I mean, that's all he was doing. He was bowing down to get the uh, state of Israel, to get the support, to get blah, blah, blah. He could not believe in any of it. I mean, is he a Jew? He's a Mormon. Oh, well, that's weird because he had the little... The yarmulke. yarmulke on mm-hmm. his head and all that good stuff. So yeah, I was just I was confused. I had a moment of confusion. I thought, wow, he's converted to uh, mm-hmm. Judaism. I guess I don't know. And he was bowing, and he had these rabbis next to him, and 50 million cameras. And so how is that any different than Obama bowing down to a Saudi king? There is none. And you know what? I really ticked well, me sure, off. There is two. Oh dang it! One's a Jew and one's a Muslim. No, no, it's not just that. Obama's liberal. <laughs> is that is that what it is? Yep. Uh, I thought I thought Obama, I thought Romney was a liberal too. I mean, you, you listened in the in the primaries, all of the people on the the more conservative side of the Republican Party excoriated Romney for coming up with his health care plan, which actually goes farther than Obama's health care plan in terms of a one payer system. <laughs> uh, if if you look at him, his track record as governor, Mitt Romney is a liberal. Yeah, he is. So what's the difference? Obamney? I mean, Obama? Because or if you Ro- don't vote for Mitt Romney, you're voting for Obama. God. You guys just don't get anything at all. <laughs> for real, one of them's a commie. I mean, I really do believe Obama's a commie, no doubt. 
But Mitt Romney's a corporatist fascist. There's no doubt about that either. Well, which would you rather have? Well, neither one, actually. Just get rid of all these labels. Doesn't doesn't matter. You know, also, can you imagine any other person who's running for president going to any other country in the world and saying, whatever decisions you make, we will back you 100%, blah, 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 right? So basically, he told Israel, no matter what decisions you make, my administration will back you. I don't know if anyone really understands what that means, but that's kind of called, I mean, I'm just throwing this out there, but I would say that like 200 years ago, that would have been called treason. You can't promise to obey another country, because that's exactly what you're doing. It's not like he's trying to drag us into a war with Iran or something. Come on. Just because Iran and Israel have been going at it, and Iran has threatened to push Israel off into the sea, and is developing nuclear weapons, and Israel already has nuclear weapons, and is threatening to use them if they get hit with a chemical weapon, which now Syria has admitted that they have and are ready to deploy. Now, we're not getting dragged into that by any of these politicians. Come on. No, we're not getting dragged in. We're getting pushed. We're willingly going. We're not getting pushed either. (laughs) We're getting ginned up, and people are excited about going to war. Oh, yeah. It's good stuff. They are excited. Well, our old wars are old. (laughs) We've we've been in Afghanistan for 10 years. We need something new on the plate. We need Korea to invade again or something. Do you remember how uh, long the Soviet Union was in Afghanistan? Was it 10, 8, 12? Nine. Nine years? No. I believe so. They invaded in 1980. Oh, oh, yeah. About eight and a half years too long. Yeah. <laughs> if they had only said mission accomplished and... Turned and ran? <laughs> uh, or left? Pathetic. Yeah. Well, what's the difference? I mean, we were celebrating the withdrawal of the Soviet troops, in which they, they basically said, we have a mission accomplished and we're going to have a withdrawal of our troops. I mean, what is the difference between what, is the happened, what happened in Afghanistan and the Soviet Union and what happened in Iraq or in Afghanistan now with us? I was reading an article the other day about a guy that uh, basically he was just saying, uh, he was talking about gun control. And uh, our Americans, they're never going to stand up. You know, this suppose you know, the whole patriot thing and all of it. Ah, they come to get my guns. Ah, bull crap. It's all a joke. But it's pretty funny at the very end of his deal, he said that. Uh, only one person has done anything violent to the U.S. government in the last decade, you know, like a singly. And he wasn't even an American. Montada Erzada, or whatever his name is, threw a shoe at George W. Bush in 2008, saying, this is a farewell kiss from the, Ameri- from the Iraqi people, dog. <laughs> I've watched that video. That was awesome. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, the whole... That's kind of going into another subject. Do we want to hit that one yet? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to. Um, well, we've only got two minutes until the news here at the bottom well, of the Well, let's start it up. It's about gun control. We had this uh, UN ban come up. It went away. Now they're trying to do a magazine ban. Now they're trying to, They're talking about uh, tax on ammo and all this and that. And everyone's like, by golly, when that happens, we're going to knuckle down, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was talking to Aaron about this, and... One of the things that I said was that it's really funny that the pro-gun people... Right no, the, no, no. Wanna, let, let me read something. Why don't you read something? I will read something. This is by one of the smarter guys that I know. It's funny because the pro-gun crowd says that guns are inanimate objects that can't hurt anyone by themselves when they are arguing with the anti-gun types, but don't want to own up to the fact that the same inanimate object cannot make them free. For a gun to work, you have to pick it up and pull the trigger. <laughs> wait, wait, just by having a gun, it doesn't make you free? Is that what that is saying? Hmm? Just by, by, but the fact is... I have I'm, no clue what that means. <laughs> I'm, man, I'm kidding. Well, I mean, look at the look at the Second Amendment. Everybody says, if the, as long as we have the Second Amendment, we are still free people. We don't have, that's like the last amendment left in the Bill, in the, the Bill of Rights. Except we don't have the Second Amendment because it's... Um, Infringed? Well, sure, it's highly regulated. Mm-hmm. Well, then, Wait a minute, it says shall not be. But Alito, Justice Alito, the conservative, just said this last week. That we, we, obviously, we, we can, we do have the right to regulate guns. Yeah, and then uh, according to 
how the guy on the news miner, if they regulate it, then the police are obligated because it's what we've hired them to do to to enforce it. Yeah, Josh, but if they ever come to get our guns, oh boy, <laughs> oh, that's when we're going to do something. Wait, we didn't do anything when they came to get our First Amendment. We didn't do anything when they came to get our Fourth Amendment. We won't do anything. Why didn't we, though? Because we had the vote. Because we voted it. Because we vote. That's where it all comes down. The only reason we do nothing is because we can vote. And as long as we have the vote, and you think that the next time you're going to get your guy in, you're asleep. All right. Welcome back to Nottingham. I mean, to the uh, Saturday morning wake-up call. Here it is, a production of Far North Tactical. And uh, good morning to one and all. Joining us in the studio today from Bighorn Enterprises, it's Josh Bennett and from Far North Ethical, Aaron Bennett. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm Steve Floyd. I'm the monkey behind the machine. And we do have a couple lines coming in on the phones whenever you want to go there at 458-TALK. Taxes, taxes, and taxes. I don't know if anyone hears Aaron and I were just laughing and Steve. At the very end of that song, you can hear the chains. (laughs) Yeah, that's the whole. That's really the whole point of the whole song is the chains. In the very beginning, we didn't play that part, but, but he says taxes, taxes, taxes. If you couldn't pay your taxes, you go to jail. Yep, I'm in here too. Then you hear the chains. We're in chains. We're not free. And thinking that you're going to vote yourself to freedom, based on 200 years of history in the United States, I'd say that you're wrong. I know we harp on the voting thing a lot, but I'm going to harp on it forever. Just tell, because well, everybody equates that to how they're going to get themselves back to liberty. And Why wouldn't you harp on it? Plus, because of the voting, they refuse to do anything else about their liberty. Because they can Well, vote. that's not true, because when they come to get our guns... We're oh, well, they haven't done that yet, so... Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, they have. And we're on the opinion that they will never. I am of the opinion they will never come get our guns. Me like too. do the door to door. Why well, door to door? They haven't, but they've they've come to get our guns in the sense that they've put restrictions on. Oh yeah. That you can't buy a particular type of gun. There are certain types of guns that you may already own to become illegal, and then if you're found having those guns, you get brought up on weapons charges. I I have a question. They um, or a comment, I guess the. Uh, the pro-gun people like to cite Nazi Germany as one of their main reasons that we should protect guns, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, and that's because Nazi Germany had some pretty strict gun laws. And But everybody thinks that the Germans went and rounded up all the guns. No. No. No, they didn't. They Not only did they not take them from the German people, they also didn't take them from the Jews. <gasps> surprise, surprise. They made it a crime punishable by death to carry a gun in public if you were Jewish. So what did all the Jews with guns do? Well, they hit them. The Warsaw Ghetto and the Warsaw Uprising, they're, I don't know where the story came from that they stole one pistol from the guard and fought the Germans for months and months. They had guns. Hollywood. They had, they had guns in the Warsaw Ghetto. They smuggled them in, in their luggage and everything else. And it wasn't until there was, what, 40,000 of them left after they extradited and exterminated how many hundreds of thousands of them before they decided, well, maybe we should use these guns. <laughs> I mean, it's not a laughing matter except for part, yeah, hello. Were they allowed to vote? Yes, they were allowed to vote. Hmm. So they had they had participated in the system. They brought it on themselves. I wonder if that's why they lent, lent legitimacy all the way to the point of death. Well, most of them went and got on the trains of their own volition, didn't they? Well, here, here's the point I was trying to make, though, is everybody thinks that there's going to be this catalyst point where the government comes and takes their guns. What's the la- the most recent place to institute nationwide gun control? Uh, Australia? Australia. Where's all the stories of the resistance? Where's all the stories of the mass gun confiscation? They're not Americans, John. They're- there is none. They didn't go take them. They're not allowed to have them anymore, but the government did not go forcibly take them from the Australian people. And I don't think they'll ever forcibly take them from us. Well, why would they? Why you chance? Can't, you can't tell me a government that has. Well, why well, maybe chance? Asian people, I don't think they ever had guns, did they? Why chance an uprising? Why go door to door? Why chance a few pockets here and there? Why put your life in your own hands? 
why take why go to somebody's house and all this and that and when they'll be docile servants and slaves to you and give you 60% of their wealth and let you do whatever they want to you while they have those guns why right, you them? you'll allow any any regulation to come come down on you when you're going to tell me that if they made carrying guns anywhere anywhere at any time illegal that you wouldn't obey it of course you would of course we have of course we mm-hmm. have yep. exactly because many... next time i'm going to vote my guy in because he's going to protect me well they, they've already had certain areas that are determined to be off limits to have guns even if you're legal to carry one even if you've gone to the extent of getting a special slave card that says that you have a special right to carry a gun a concealed carry permit even if you have one of those there are certain places where you still may not legally carry one the courthouse the what the post office the airport you cannot even carry a gun in those places because there are federal employees and you'd be breaking the law so what do most people do most they, people everywhere they, they don't break the law they don't break the law they leave their guns in the car or they don't bring them out at all as long as they don't physically take them which I'd like to remind everybody one more time, the Germans didn't do that. Could you remind me one more time? The English didn't do that. Hmm. The Canadians didn't do that. You talk to any Canadian that's in any kind of a country bumpkin about guns, and they just laugh. Because all of his uncles and brothers and dads all have guns. They just don't take them anywhere. They don't carry them. They don't do anything with them. I read a thing of Jeff Berwick the other day where... uh... He said he's gotten comments from people that said, I would never move to Mexico because you're not allowed to have guns. In America, we're allowed. We're free. And he said, think, think about what you just said. You're free because you're allowed. <laughs> he said, that's slave talk. You're not allowed to have guns in Mexico. And his point was, free men don't care about what's allowed. What? <laughs> Let's take that poor caller. He's been on for like... An hour. Four five eight talk is a number. Good morning. Welcome to the Saturday morning wake up call. Who's this? Good morning, gentlemen. This is John Gulch. Ah, oh, how goes the Gulch? It goes all right. I I've would... asked this question every time you've called. Who the heck is John Galt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who is John Galt? Well, somebody's gonna have to uh, explain that to you, I guess, one of these days. But. Uh, <laughs> My point, uh, you know, you you say you advocate no voting. How is Ron Paul supposed to win if you don't vote? Ron Paul doesn't even want to win. Well, here's here's uh, here's maybe the best candidate of all. How about nobody? I mean, after all, nobody is clearly the best candidate. Nobody cares. Nobody keeps his campaign promises. Nobody listens to your concerns. Nobody tells the truth. Nobody will lower your taxes. Nobody will defend your rights. Nobody has all the answers. Nobody has, should have that much power. Yeah, that's... Thank you. Yeah, exactly yeah, right. Awesome. Nobody should have that much power. <laughs> that was an awesome call. That was excellent. I think i got to turn that and take that call and turn it into a campaign commercial. That would be good. Start playing He's it. exactly right. The last thing he said, no one should have that much power, is exactly right. Why should anyone have any power over you? I mean, it's just... My head wants to go bang. Why do we allow people to tell us what to do? You keep talking like this, it might. Why do we... Well, we don't allow people. We ask them to tell us what to do. We tell people to tell us what to do. Yeah. And then we... Uh, How many times have you heard someone say, what we need is a good person in office? Yes. Every year? Yesterday? Yeah. Every I, day? I hear it every single day. We yeah. just need to get the right people in office. Well, the what? fallacy, and it's... The fallacy that who who propagates that fallacy? Who's the one that pushes it more than anything? The government. Get out the votes. I mean, how many programs do you see or hear or whatever to get out the vote? Even get MTV, the vote. They, every year the they have the rock the vote, and it's like four months long, rock the vote. To keep us enslaved. Because we refuse to do anything else as long as we can vote. Because the next time we're going to get our guy in. And I don't know who this guy is. I mean... No, nobody, just like John Galt just said. Exactly. That's the perfect candidate. The nobody. perfect candidate is nobody. Well, you guys had a show that I didn't make it on for talking about um, a possible eventual collapse of the United States financially or whatever. 
and predominantly you had guys call in and say that, well, we'd have to set up a new government here. We'd have to have someone to lead us. And we'd have to have some good person to lead us. That's what Schaefer Cox was saying. All right. I mean, and, but, and, and he was that man. He, he said, I will do it. Well, the problem I, is that people don't understand that some good person, lead, and government are oxymorons. Once you are some good person in leadership in government, you're no longer a good person. That's just the facts of life. The only way you are you, not a good person anymore. The first thing you'd have to do is uh, make up an institution of force to make control. And that's exactly what that caller was asking. Yeah, for. he was saying we'd have to have a monopoly of force by someone to keep the peace and blah, 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 because we'd obviously, without police or whatever being out there or government, we'd all kill each other, which... I mean, I would kill you, probably. Well, I'm sure you would. And I can say that to you. I just can't say that to fictitious um, people aliens from, from Colorado. Right. As all as we're asking people to do fine. is do something else besides voting. If you have to, no, I can't even get myself to say if you have to vote. But if you do have to vote, <laughs> do a, something else worthwhile. It, I mean, think of all the money. Think, you go work your life away, boom, boom, boom. Government takes 60% of everything you make, and then you pump even 10 cents into getting someone else. So you pump more money into the political system makes no sense to me at all. Well, you can actually do even more than that. If you look at your tax return now, you can actually contribute even more to the political process. Oh, yeah. On, on, even right on there, your... Right and, there on your tax, on your tax form. You isn't can, there something on your dividend form, too, where yep, you can give money to a yep. stinking politician who's only job in life is to steal from you? What a joke. I don't understand it. There's got to be a better way. No. Nigh, I say, there is a better way. What's that? Not to vote. Oh. But Refuse then other people will vote for you, and then they're going to tell you Let what to them. do anyway. If all the bad people vote and you get all the bad people in there, they will collapse. Right. That's that's my only, uh, only reason I want uh, Mitt Romney to win rather than Obama's, because I'm not... Not ready for the collapse. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. I need a little bit more food and whatnot. <laughs> It, and if Mitt Romney gets it, I mean, the bottom line is, is it will stimulate the economy, just not because of any policies, just because of who he is. Uh, it'll make reassurance with the people, and people will spend money. The free, the the market itself will create wealth, right? Just based on him getting voted in, and that'll instantly make it seem like he made things better. But it's not won't last very long. Won't last very long at all. <laughs> I, I need to ask a question because this is something that is really bothering me. It seems like everyone I know, and now you just did it too, Aaron, keep talking about how the economy will improve if people spend money. What if, what if instead people made things? What if people grew things? Because we're not in that kind of an economy. Yeah, his point was short term. Right. People's, yay, invest, invest, spend, spend. Short term, things will look rosy. From a strictly a Keynesian point of view, if Mitt Romney gets voted in, the economy will look a lot better almost immediately. And a lot of jobs will get created, but it'll be very short term. And it'll look like he did those things, but it'll be the people themselves that did it. <laughs> That's another thing that boggles my mind. You just made me want to go out and vote for Obama. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. Oh. Uh, no, if Obama wins, it'd probably be four years out, and I mean the United States. What do, you, do you mean that it would be gone within four years? Probably. We may even see a slight rise in housing again under Mitt Romney. People will have confidence in everything. What's just going to expand our financial crisis? Which just, make people happy that their vote counted for once, and then a few years later, they'll get the big bomb. At least it'll go down with a Republican at the wheel. That'll make me smile. <laughs> you know, no one... Have we ever challenged... We've always challenged people to tell us what laws ever made us free. And uh, No one's ever taken us up on that in two years, by the way. Ah, I think we need a new challenge. What vote has ever given you liberty? What, if anyone wants to call in and tell us break? what, lo, what <laughs> vote... What vote has ever come up... Has, advanced your liberty 
When have you ever voted on something and uh, it adv- any legislation that comes up, you have one side voting against it and one side voting for it? When has it ever advanced it? How it's can not you, like how not can like you, just uh, you know stalemate there where it just kind of rides along or whatever. How can, when is it ever how advanced? How can you vote liberty? I don't. When have you voted where you how got? How can you create a law that makes liberty? When has there ever been a vote where you got more freedom as a result of a vote? And then if someone wants to call and challenge us, if we can talk about what vote have we ever had where we had less freedoms, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just threw up in my mouth. What, okay, well, what about when they repealed prohibition? We didn't vote on that. How did that get repealed? Well, the what the Congress it, it voted wasn't on it, that. But it wasn't a, it wasn't a constitutional amendment to repeal the amendment that gave us prohibition in the first place. Right, but we weren't made con- you weren't made more free though, because okay. you could drink before prohibition came. When has it ever advanced liberty? Hang on, hang on. So nine, Don't tell me you found something. Ninety nine percent of the time we're voting on law, right? Right. We're, we're always voting on law. Right? Well not not law with a capital L. Okay, well I'm looking up law with a lowercase L. Political. Does that make you feel better? Okay, there we go. Little little L political, political law. law. Little go. little L's political law. I didn't know that. Uh, law, system of rules that a country or community recognizes as regulating the actions of its members, and may be enforced by the imposition of penalties. <laughs> so every time we're voting on a law, we're voting on regulating the actions of its members. Right. So how can anybody call in and answer your question? Someone's calling. Maybe they got us. Oh, let's do it. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. Welcome to the wake-up call. Who's this? This is Al. Al, what you got? How about the original Constitution? No. Nope. We freed ourselves from, we didn't have the right not to pay taxes when we left freed, when we left England and fought against it. And we didn't have taxes when we originally started. Cheers. We didn't? No. The Constitution exclusively, exclusively gave Congress the right to levy taxes and on top of that to create legislative law. Not to do, under the king at the time, the king only had the power to enforce what was already known and common as law. But we weren't paying taxes up until... What are you talking about? Look at the look at the history of of. Well, I think uh, he said we weren't paying taxes until we got the Constitution, right? Yes. Oh, so you're saying the Constitution was another? Wait a minute. I thought you were saying the Constitution was the first thing that got passed that gave us. Well, liberty. it gave us lots of freedoms that we didn't have when we left the king. No, 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 no. The Constitution actually took away freedoms. I just thought of something. No. Actually, yes, it did. The Declaration of Independence gave us liberty. But well, it didn't, didn't actually give us liberty. It was a piece of paper. People, had to people go didn't vote it. People didn't most. vote on it to adopt the... The, the Declaration of Independence spelled out mm-hmm. our inherent liberties. The Constitution put a limitation on those. The Constitution gave Congress the right to tax you, and that, exclusively the right to tax you, and then on top of that, the ability to legislate law. No time before that, it didn't even body been able to just sit there and let just create law once they were able to create paper law there was no end to it look at the result today i mean you you come on all the time and talk about all these legislative laws that you want to fight and this and that where did those come from those came from the constitution giving power to a legislative body to create paper law and that came from your constitution and it gave us the freedom to fight those it, proposals or accusations or or laws no, how it is, didn't give us the freedom what? to fight. We had that before. We uh, didn't have it when we left the king. Yes, we did. We left the king. <laughs> we left. We declared independence, and we left the king. Uh, assume for a moment that we did have that. What happened when in the in the war between the states? We had a number of states say, we don't want to be part of this system anymore. We're going to leave you. Just like what happened in the American Revolution. Only in this case, the party being left... Abraham, well, yeah, and then and the the oh, went, being the, the one the, the party being left went out and said no, you can't leave. Sorry. Now the Constitution runs down a list that spells out certain rights that they just felt that they needed to spell out. Right? We all agree on that. 
But none of those things count for anything when you have exclusive power granted to a body of people to create law. Why do you think they specifically granted certain rights in the Constitution? Because Patrick Henry went nuts and said he wouldn't uh, vote for the Constitution unless they put in a Bill of Rights. Or maybe because they didn't have those before. Oh, yes, they did. They all believed in common law. They they all believed in common law. They believed in Magna Carta. They said that Magna Carta gave them that right. Yeah, and common law was set up by who? By men. By the king. No, it wasn't. wasn't. Who Who appointed the judges during the kingships? People did. The king did. They weren't judges. They were um, mostly priests. Well, just changing terms. What did they do? They mitigated between two people. No, common law goes back before there was kings. There wasn't. There weren't always kings either. I mean, there was a time when there was just a bunch of people, especially after the Roman Empire. And what did they have? They had some sort of leader, they had a king, what they called what patriarch. they called ancient law. Now, they pulled from ancient law from every civilization to come up with what they called common law. And common law had to agree with all religions, and that was that was or had to e- agree pretty, with the, the reason you the religion. reason you only ended up with two um, enduring rules in common law is because it had to agree with all religions, and, and, and they based it on what was common. Right, right, which and was so do all you have agreed to do. Something common back then to today, you know, if you wanted common law today. There's a lot of difference between what's common now and what's common then. It's an evolu- it's an evolutionary thing. Absolutely. It's going to evolve. How do you figure? Do all of you have agreed to do and don't transgress on anyone else? What's changed? That's one part of it. But what's is it common to pay taxes now? That came. No, our I, taxes are being levied actually, on us from wait, actually, Congress. Actually, no, it's not. Look at how many people avoid paying taxes. Look at how many people uh, refuse to pay taxes. It's a very small percentage. Look at how many people take ex- exemptions. Do you take any exemptions on your taxes, Joe? I take Joe? piles of exemptions. Okay, so then you don't really pay your taxes. Taxes come from political law anyways. They don't come from common law. I understand that, but it's common. No. <laughs> okay, how about natural law? Let's change it, the words, wording a little bit so we can... Well, under not natural diluting. law, you're still going to have you're going to have somebody that's in a leadership position to have authority over you. But in the old days, it was not someone that was paid by a government to do it. It was just an arbitrator. And, and he was appointed by the government. No. Okay. We can disagree. I mean, but the fact That's not is that historically the historically const- accurate, though. No, it's not. And the Constitution did not give us more freedoms. It did not guarantee. I mean, how did the Constitution guarantee any of our freedoms when you can be arrested now? For free speech, you can be arrested now for owning certain weapons. You can be arrested without having a warrant. You can have your door kicked in. You can be arrested for floating down the river and having a few beers. And uh, yeah, it did not protect or give any rights. It definitely didn't give anybody liberty. That's fact. That's the point of the Ninth Amendment. No, but it guaranteed. But the Ninth guaranteed Amendment. Guaranteed what? How does it guarantee? Al- well, which of your which of those ten amendments, the original ten amendments, which of those guarantee anything? Yeah, well, our court systems have messed that up. Well, then obviously it didn't guarantee it. Our did court it? system no. didn't mess that up. The Constitution did. The Constitution grant it created the three branches of power. Well, if we didn't have it, do you think we'd have more or less guns in this country? Didn't have what? The Constitution. People had guns before the Constitution. That's I how we understand that. Would we have more or less now? If we didn't have, if we just went, I mean, the time period between the Declaration well, and the Constitution, we'd have more. I'd have me a machine gun, belt fed, mm-hmm, baby. Mm-hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Mean and they'd be cheap because they wouldn't be regulated. They were cheap up until well, the 80s. How do, you, how do you figure they wouldn't be regulated? Because you wouldn't have created law. You would just it's, have it's, what's it's common. It's a natural thing. It's gonna, you're going to create law. If you didn't have a Constitution, it just slowed up the regulations on on gun control or, or making laws of what type or what can, kind of gun you Can you tell have. me any time in history where a, gr- a group of people was allowed to create law? There's only one other time. Let's say that one more time. Where a group of people is allowed to create law. Well, I go right back to the beginning. Actually, it's happened One twice. person created law from the start, and that was God. Okay, that's, but, but that's we not, agree. But that's not a human. I mean, I think what what, what Aaron is saying when he's saying a person, he means like uh, one human the, making a law the Romans, for other people. The Romans instituted a similar type of government. It's actually where we pulled upon to 
come up with a republic. They lasted a but, lot longer than we did. But even even their republic didn't grant um, rights to just create legislative law. The only country I know of that absolutely created legislative law nonstop was Carthage. And do a little reading on Carthage, and there's a very strong parallel to how where we are today. Weren't they debating right up until they were crushed? I mean, they they, they were they actually debating in, in, <laughs> they, in, in legislature instead of defending the wall. They say that they were still politically campaigning for power because it was during an election time when the Romans held half the city. There and if you there was a point between they were 70, still voting when the Romans had half their city. Well, if their guy would have got in, they wouldn't have been. If crushed. the right guy, yeah. It's, 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 but between 1776 and 1789, there were no. You still had rights. See, in 1776, during the Declaration of Independence, and when the Constitution was ratified, those people didn't all of a sudden live in a state of non-rights. That's what. what that's the point of the Ninth Amendment was. What rights any did rights, they have? In the Ninth Amendment, it says any rights not in here, the people still retain. What were they? What were they? The right to do whatever they wanted to do as long as they didn't infringe on someone else's life or property. And as long as they... That's insane. And as long as they kept their contract. (laughs) So that just boils right back that there was a, you know, there was, there was a standard... Right, there was already rights. That's why they had a bill of rights. Was because Patrick Henry, if you read what he said about it, he said, "Wait a minute, there's no protection for yeah. the people. The government gets to do everything." Recognizing that this, this constitution that they had just created was going to create a monster, they said, "We need to enumerate certain rights that the, the government must never cross." And did it help? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Al. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate uh, the so phone I call. guess by Al saying that at the very end. What we're saying, what he's saying, is that there's never been any anything that was voted on that cr- that cr- uh, created liberty. Yeah, I guess I, I guess that does kind of make the point. That well, I was gonna say I've, I'm gonna backtrack on my own thing with the Declaration of Independence because they say, well, they voted on that, but they didn't didn't they have the right to secede from the king? With or without the that Declaration? That was kind of what the Declaration was saying. Right. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one group of people. To, be to dissolve the bonds. Right. That wasn't giving them freedom. They were just saying, we have the freedom. We are King. recognizing. Here's what we're doing. Yeah. Be gone, small one. All right. <laughs> we're up against the clock. Coming up on the Fox News, this has been a production of Far North Tactical. Thanks for listening to the Saturday morning wake-up call. Patriots Lament is next. All right. Welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's a production of they Bighorn just, Enterprises. <laughs> you guys are... Right. Hello. We're on Hello. the air. And I just wanted to make it. You guys are getting into it, which is awesome. Let's, let's put it on the air. Let, let's take this conversation that you're having right now and it, put it out there for people to I'd join in I'd like to stay on. out of jail. Well, Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's put it. No, in, we can edit I'm yourself a little bit. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, when is the last time you have been in, 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 admonished to think at all here's about our new anything? Motto. Our new motto is "Bring your brain." Bring your brain. <laughs> Do, that, Turn on the show does and that bring include your brain. me. Yeah. No, no, wait. No, you first, go buy a brain, <laughs> and then and then you can bring it. Uh, so I've been. Well. Do you purchase brains with by reading books? No. Uh, no, you don't. No. You, you actually have to have a brain in order to read a book in the first place. Oh. Do you purchase I think God gave you one. Do you have a brain when you do nothing but regurgitate what you've been taught for the last however old you are? Say in the politics? Are you thinking with your brain when it comes to politics or is everything that comes out of your mouth concerning politics, voting or whatever? regurgitation of what you've been taught your whole entire life. And so the kids' quotes, those are my kids quoting uh, some Founding Father quotes or whatever. I listen to that about ten times a day. I know I'm a geek, but I like my kids. So what? I was just, it's kind of dawned on me. When uh, Patrick Henry is giving his speech in front of the, the, shoot, I think that was actually with Virginia. So anyways, she says, why stand, Why stand we, here? we here idle? What is it gentlemen wish? So I was just, that kind of hit me. Why stand we here idle? Because I think the fact is, we don't know what to do. And they were there to vote on things. Voting to, yeah. They were there to vote to go to 
war. Whether they were going to or not. Going to be free and independent. The war was already going on, but not every state was involved. Right. That's right? why I said our brethren are already in the field. They're yeah. already out there fighting. Why are we standing here idle? So I just thought about that to today. Fast forward to 2012. Try to put my brain on. Screw it down tight. Why do we stand here idle when just about anyone, I'm going to go out there and say, if there's still anyone listening to this show, you think there's a problem with this country, right? Sure they do. So why stand we here idle? Because the only thing that we've been taught your whole life is that political change is the only way that we're going to get out of the mess. That's why we're idle. We don't know what else to do. What is there to do? Because we haven't, for one, I think, because we haven't put our brain on and said, there's got to be something different than what I've been getting back and forth and regurgitating my whole life. What comes in goes right back out. What comes in goes right back out. Well, isn't that what part of the public school education system is designed to do? Absolutely. To, to get is. you to just, by rote, repeat what they tell I, you to? I remember a caller from a long time ago that called up, and he was really mad at us for t- talking about not voting. And he said, I have been voting for 57 years. And I think before we even got to jump on him, he realized what he just said. He'd been voting for 57 years. You know what I mean. Before we even got to say anything, we discussed he realized nicely. what, what he, he said. What he just said. He'd been voting for 57 years and affected zero change. In fact, there has been lots of change, but none in the direction that he desired. None in the direction of liberty. Zero. I am submitting today. Voting cannot, will not, ever advance freedom or liberty. It will never happen. It is not going to happen. Put your brain on. Get the re- Quit regurgitating. Voting is not going to help anything. We've got to come together with our brains and come up with something else. What about the tax gap? Can I, can I play devil's advocate sure. for you? With, uh, uh, here's the deal. The... Fairbanks North Star Borough, here to very locally, has the power to tax at whatever level it wants to, except for the fact that the there was a voter-led initiative introduced, I don't know, 20-plus years ago, that limited how much they could tax uh, by saying, basically, you can't have any more growth except for new construction. You cannot just grow and, and raise many, the taxes. How many times have they raised that tax gap? They've never raised the tax cap. What they have done is they have introduced more and more new construction. They've raised the value of the homes. They've found more ways of getting the taxes, but it's been introduced to us that if we did not have that tax cap, that our taxes would be through the roof. And it has been argued, and I think quite successfully, because it keeps on getting passed every single year by a huge margin, or every two years, that if we didn't have the tax cap, it would be out of control taxation, and therefore we need to do it, and it is keeping us from being taxed to death. And the fear is out there that if we didn't do it, that the very next time it it went out of uh, compliance, that they'd jump in there and raise our our mill rate. Same kind of thing is going on now with the wood issue, Mm -hmm. where they have already passed a regulation because in 2010, the voters passed an initiative that said you cannot regulate our stoves, and so they're saying, okay, fine. And they wrote a bit of legislation that regulates our stoves that goes into effect the day that that ban expires. So do we not need to go out and vote to say, no, you can't do that again? No. Do you want them to regulate our stoves, Josh? The time is near at hand, whether Americans should be free men or slaves. If you're going to go down and vote against the wood stove ban, you're admitting that you're nothing but a slave. You're begging fealty from a bunch of nobodies that are no different than you, that have two arms, two eyes, two ears, were created the exact same way you were by the exact same God. Let me me interject something really quick. Steve, so let's take the wood stove ban. Let's say that they're going to vote on it again, right? Yeah, it's, it's going to be on the ballot here in October. Let's say the vote goes the other way. Okay, so that they say, no, you, you, they do have the right to regulate it. That's right. right. Okay. Are you going to respect that? 
Or are you going to come on your radio show and rant and rave about how they just did that? Well, I, I think I'm probably going to rant and rave. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be generally my, 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 but how, that's my default position. How, what, right and premise, <laughs> what right and premise would you have to do that? If isn't, you voted isn't against the, it. Isn't the real problem there the fact that the government has no business, no right to regulate our wood stoves in the first place? They have no business in that. And by going down there and voting, anybody that goes and votes on that says that they do have that right. They do have the right. And please, sir, please, sir. Listen to me, sir. I don't want you to do that to me, sir. That's all it is. But, they, but actually, the initiative says they do not have the right. They, they may not pass a Then a, why a are law. you voting on it again? Yeah. If they don't have the right to do that, why the heck do you waste your time to go down and pass a ballot? If, you have, if they don't have the right to do that, then you have the right to burn. If you have the right to burn, why do you need to go ask them? Because they've already why passed Why do you need to ask half the people whether or not you can do that or not? They've already passed an ordinance that will come out and fine me if I burn. Let them do it. I don't want to pay the fine. Don't pay the fine. Then I'll lose my house. That's what I said. So what? We're going to be free yes. men or slaves. What? So if the vote goes the other way, are you going to come on your radio show and complain about it? And with the property tax, I pay almost 6000 bucks a year. How is that? What what good is this? Ca- oh, you'd probably be t- paying ten if we didn't have the cap. It never goes down. And so wait, wait. You just admitted to paying your borough tax. Yeah, I don't so want to. Why, get why my are you telling anymore? me not to pay my fine? I will. Do, I won't do it either. I'm gonna burn. I don't care if they ban wood stoves tomorrow and said you cannot own any wood stove. What's the difference between not paying the fine and not paying in. your taxes? I, I don't have it right now. Oh. Well, there's something I'm not going to talk about on the radio, Steve. Okay. All right. All right. All righty then. <laughs> Too sensitive a topic, eh? Just poke around a little bit no, here until something smarts. Are we free or we're not free? We've got to do something different. We're standing here idle, wishing and hoping that this vote and voting is basically nothing but giving your consent. And shooting someone without having to see the the blood, because you're pointing the gun at someone else and pulling the trigger. But doesn't any of any other option that you have, Josh? Isn't any other option met with that same bullet? I mean, if you decide that voting isn't your way to uh, ensure liberty for yourself, or at least the the hope for it, uh, don't all other paths lead to violence against you? Against me? Yeah, I guess pretty much. I mean, that's why. And, and what why what here. was it that Patrick Henry was was um, getting all upset about? Is what? Why stand we here idle? What do you think those men were discussing when they were talking about going to war with Britain? Just because um, New York's at war with Britain doesn't mean Virginia is. Right. And, and Massachusetts doesn't mean. Yep. So they're reasoning with themselves because they were scared, of course. So just because Schaefer and, Cox and so is at war with the Patrick, government? It takes, took Patrick Henry to say, what is it you gentlemen wish? Bow down and lick the hands that feed you to knock him out of their shell. And if you're voting, I was just asked this question. If you're voting, is the vote only legitimate if your vote wins? Yes. If you lose the vote, is it still legitimate? No. Well, I mean, look at look at how upset people are about President Obama. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're looking is for... Is that not a legitimate vote? And they're, they're looking for any way they possibly can to make it not a legitimate vote. His birth certificate. He was born in Kenya. He's a communist. He's not really an American citizen. I mean, think about all the different things that people keep trying to do to make the vote not legitimate. Well, let's keep it right here with uh, the borough where people, I mean, that's what people listening mostly are concerned about is this piece of crap across the river what uh if the wood stove ban fails then is it is it legitimate when the borough assembly enforces its wood stove ban yes well then they're going to say no because people like you didn't come out and vote for it it's your fault because yeah, but that that doesn't hold any precedence. Most of doesn't the people, hold water. I, most of the people here don't vote. But you know, I I hit you on it like ten times. Josh just said the same thing I've been saying. So let's say the vote swings the other way. Are you are you gonna be okay with that? 
Uh, no. Then don't go vote. What's this? Stream is dead. Okay. So the uh, the online streaming, I'll have to go and uh, reset that. Can you guys handle the phones here for yourself? Sure, for let's do this. All right. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. You're on Patriots Lament. This is Al. Hey, Al. I got a question for Josh. Oh. Well, I got two questions, but I'll, I'll ask the first one for Josh. Why do you choose to be a slave? Because right now, you choose to be a slave so you're not dead. <laughs> There's no other place that you couldn't be a slave? Oh, yeah. There are other areas to be slaves at. Well, I, I'm asking, is there any other place that you, you could choose that you wouldn't be a slave? Um, Probably not. I know some people that have moved, and certain aspects are probably a slave. We could argue that, but there are places where you could be less of a slave because obviously there are um, area, other countries that have governments that don't have the kind of resources that ours have. Mm-hmm. I've lo- I've looked. <laughs> There's there is. Uh, well, you'll have to submit to somebody or some law or some regulation. Right now we do. Or some authority. Yes. I would say that Switzerland's probably, as far as a very civilized, very um, proficient government, would be the freest place you could go. Don't they pay a heavy tax over there? I'm sure they do. Yeah. My uh, second question is: is at some point, just prior, during, or just after the Revolutionary War? We were as free as we ever could be. I agree. Why did our founding fathers, you know, write up the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, ratify it, vote on it, and pass it? Because uh, a lot of, a bunch, couple... They uh, had all the freedoms they wanted. There was a few of them that were power, power hungry. If you look at the whole picture, there was an extreme amount of opposition against the Constitution. And... And unifying the states in general. And succession was put in there just to appease the anti-federalists. And I also think that um, historically, if you look at what they knew up to that time, it was the best that some of them could come up with. Yeah. And you have, um, I, you said something in the last hour that I was trying to reply to. If you look at American history, how many, right off the bat, in the first 10 years, how many wars, how many homeland wars were there that were over taxes how many rebellions was there how many were put down by the federal government in just our first 10 15 years it's unbelievable people that were not okay with paying taxes right out the gate and they they came at uh, the american people with taxes immediately well because you can't you can't operate a government without having somebody funding it Right. That's absolutely right. You have to extort, and you have to use force right out the gate. And they did use force on the American people. Uh, George, George Washington, Washington. What did he lament? So that you know, that always what? goes right back to my point: is people will always go back to what they know. What, what was George? Just... What was George Washington's one regret when he uh, when he was on his way out? I don't know. Do you have the actual quote? I don't have. I was hoping Josh knew his actual oh, quote. I don't know the actual quote. Basically, <laughs> that he usurped the Constitution when he put down the rebellion. He put down which rebellion? The, the whiskey uh, rebellion. Whiskey rebellion. When he went and put down the whiskey rebellion and um, used federal troops and uh, asserted federal force over the American people, that was his one lament going out of office. He said he was wrong. He should not have done that. I agree with him. I guess Al, we're trying to... I don't want to leave here. I actually like it. I have a house. I got nice places. I like to go moose hunting. I take my boys. I like to go salmon fishing. I like to catch grayling. I know you're a huge outdoor guy. I love hunting. I love it. I don't want to leave. So, I want something different here. The way we're going now can't And how are you going to get something different? That's what I'm asking everyone. Can't we do something different? The There's got to be something is different. Is the political process the political working? Process. Our only process right now is through the participation of government and voting. Is it working no, now? Not the, it, it's not working. Not I'm all the time. The, it I'm works in, not in, all the time. It doesn't work at all. Well, the, the same thing. It incrementally didn't happen overnight. It happened over 200 years. And you think you're going to incrementally go in reverse? No. 
history's not showing that. Exactly. Right. So what do we do, Al? You you suck it up. You, so you, you just try, keep doing. You just try to do your best while you're on here for the. 60, 90 well, years I mean, here and, you wanted to go all the way back to the founders. Thank God they didn't suck it up. Well, I mean, you said there was a lot of opposition, but, you know, there wasn't enough. No, I'm going back to their uh, opposition to the king. They could have sucked that up. They still had rights as Englishmen. Mm -hmm. In fact, the that was... we have now? Well, they chose the... They were you know, much... They chose to rebel against the king. They had a war. They won. They were as free as they ever were. And what did they do? Actually, they, under the king, that, they were much freer than we are now. Yeah, that's what he said. I'm, yeah. I know, they instituted government. They You're instituted right. government and, and it's a, you know, it'll repeat itself. It went all the way. So yeah, what I'm saying is why do we stand here idle? There's gotta be something else we can do. Let's try something different. I just have one other little criticism. Go ahead. And and it's and it's just fair. You know, you said you shouldn't have to listen to what other people tell you. But even on their show, directly and indirectly you're telling people what to do. No, I don't. People can do whatever they want. I don't use a gun to force people to do. I'm not do saying you use a gun to enforce, but you you put it out there directly or subliminally and said, you know, you ought to think about doing it like this. Wait, wait. You just said what he said he's been doing. You, you said you ought to think about it. Oh, I do. I is, think is about Josh, it a lot. Is Josh telling you not to pay your taxes? No. Is Josh telling you not to pay your fines? No. Is Josh telling you to rebel in any way, shape, or form against the hand that feeds you? No, no, I'm not. But he, he subliminally, so, you know, what's the purpose of voting? Yeah, no, I I see what you're saying, but what I'm what I was saying when you shouldn't have to do what people tell you, you shouldn't have to do what I tell you. I'm not telling you to do anything. You want to vote? I'm Al? suggesting something. Go ahead. A different, an alternate. I'm suggesting something alternate to what we have because what we have is tyranny. I want something different. I want to be free. What I'm saying is, when then I say people shouldn't, point? we need to get rid of the government. <laughs> And how are you going to do that? You're going to have to. I don't you're know. You're going to have right to well, I put suggest your ideology out there and and have enough mass of people, safety in numbers. Yes. To change it. Exactly. That's and all I'm so asking. People will have to agree with you. And that's why I suggest what I suggest because I want people to agree with me. That's why I come on every Saturday. Or so intellectual. When you, a, when you get a group of people, you'll all have to decide or vote. You, you know, and no. make a decision on this is the way we want to go now. No, I'm saying that we don't have to vote. What I'm saying is let's refuse our consent. Let's just quit voting. Let's quit participating in it. As soon as we did that, if enough of us quit consenting, the government would collapse, wouldn't it? Look, look at what happened in the South with the rebellion against the segregation laws. What, what got those laws overturned and nullified? Was Numbers it an, of people. It wasn't an act of Congress. It wasn't a vote of the people. It was people going out and saying... I am not going to do this. I'm going to sit here and make you arrest me. And yes, it was in large numbers of people. But they all got arrested. How many times did well, Martin Luther King some, go to Well, there's jail? some of that going down right now in the lower 48 with the uh, TSA checkpoints. You have whole groups of people that are dedicating their lives to just going through those checkpoints and telling them that they're, they won't submit, they won't do anything that they tell them to. Yeah. Al, do you got uh, internet? Like yeah. YouTube? Mm -hmm. You should check out, uh, I don't remember, go to YouTube. I mean, it is, I think you'd enjoy it. I kind of, I've never met you, I don't really know you, but I kind of know where you're coming from, I think. Uh, jump on YouTube and uh, click in TSA checkpoints and watch some of those. There's some amazing fun. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you will have fun. There's some amazing stuff going on down there. And, uh, I think you'd enjoy it. Yeah, no, it's 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 a start, but there's not enough because you haven't changed anything. Right, but there was several hundred years before the American Revolution mm -hmm. where they were struggling. There was there was I don't know how many rebellions from 1630 to the the American Revolution. There was rev rebellion after rebellion after rebellion after rebellion. Read conceived in liberty. The people stood up and said, no more. They kicked the governors out, and then the governor came back in with more power. They kicked them out again. They came back with more troops. They kicked them out again. Some places, they left them alone because they said, this isn't worth it. And those, all, all of those things happened from intellectualism, people like John Locke and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, wait, wait. So you're going back and telling people to bring your brain again? I'm saying that no... The only place I can see in history where people rose up out of anything other than intellectual thought would be the French Revolution. 
And the French Revolution was spawned by looking at America, and they just wanted what we had. Oh, they all just lost their heads. Didn't they? <laughs> they, they definitely did lose their heads. <laughs> Anyways, check that out, Al. I think, yeah. it, I think you'll appreciate it. There's right. some good stuff on there. we got about a minute before the news. You want to try to squeeze in another sure. call? 458 Talk is the number. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, go ahead. Did you see today's headlines in the uh, August 4th Daily News Miner? I don't get a print copy. What were the headlines? I saw something about Schaefer Cox, but I didn't have time to read it. Yeah, it's about Schaefer Cox. And the headline, the banner headline says, <clears throat> Cox, I was foolish, full of pride. And it says, Militia Leader sends out letter from jail ahead of September sentencing hearing. And I'm anxious to get that letter. I guess maybe a person could go to the University Baptist Church, it says here, that it indicates you might be able to get it there. But I think everybody who has any feeling of support for Schaefer should write a letter to the judge and ask for leniency and it would help of course to read this letter first so I plan to do that. Yeah, we encourage everyone to write the judge down there and beg for leniency to all those guys. They don't belong there. They do not belong there. Write the judge. Tell him to do the right thing for once in his political career. Thanks for the call, Randy. We're up against the Fox News. You've got it on Patriots Lament on KFAR Local Talk Radio. Everybody sing along with that one. Uh, it's, uh, hey, welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. All right. oh, I love that song. In the studio with us, uh, the producer of the show here, uh, Josh Bennett from Big Horn Enterprises, and also we've got uh, Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical. I'm Steve Floyd. I'm just the monkey behind the machine. I love Robin Hood. All right. Do we, where do we go now? Let's hit the, yeah, the Back. guy on the hotline has been on there. All well, right, so. let's go to the hotline. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey. Ben? Hello. What's up? What, what's your name? That sounds like Dave Giesel. Dave Giesel. Hey, woo What's going how's on? How's it going, brother? Yeah. Oh, yeah, hey. Hey. Um, <laughs> uh. So I tuned in for uh, just a couple minutes there and caught Sal's call, and, um, First, there's a myth that I wanted to dispel yet again. We've probably done this like 10 times on the show and at least five times on the blog. Um, Americans were much more free by every single metric under the king than they were the day after the Declaration of Independence was signed. That's, that's just a fact of life. Lower taxes, less regulation, you name it. Let's remember what happened to the currency during the Revolutionary War. Anybody, uh, anybody remember that little story? Go for it. Currency? Yeah. The, the revolutionaries destroy their own money to fight the Revolutionary War. Right? Yep. So how, how does that, you know, correlate with freedom? It was, in fact, the British loyalists who held on to their silver who were the only people with money after the war. So there's this weird mythology floating around that, oh, we had the Revolutionary War and we were the freest people on the planet right after the war. No, everybody in the United States or the colonies, as they were, was more free before the war than after it. Gary North goes through this, too, on taxation. Their taxes were substantially lower under the king than they were immediately after the war, because all the war debts had to be repaid. Which is where a bunch of the laws came from, too, to protect the... uh to protect the states from uh, individuals that had loaned them money. It's where a lot of our laws came from that we have still to this day, and even some of the amendments that were put into the Constitution because the state wanted to protect itself from having to pay its war debt back. That's, yep, that's right, yep. So let's bury that myth, um, at least for the next half hour. <laughs> it will come back, I'm sure. Conservatives love that myth because, by golly, we'll fight a war and war will make us free. Um We'll bury that one, and then we'll go to the second part, which was, well, what are you going to do? Are you just going to sit there and take it? So let's think about the people who waged, waged the Revolutionary War. Let's remember how they stayed in Europe to do it. Remember how they all stayed in England to fight the king on his own turf? Does anybody remember that part? Uh, no, not so much. Nope. So what did they do first? They, they left. left Europe, right? Right. They went far, far away. And uh, very, very minor oppression over an entire ocean, right? I mean, the taxes were almost nothing. Uh, but they got sick of it after, you know, what, 100, 150 years? Well, and yeah, they raised the... King came. Sorry, I just said they, they raised the quit rents from uh, 
two shillings per thousand acres to a penny a hundred acres, and that pissed them off. Right. Yeah. And it, you know, and in the meantime, they're so far away that, like you said, they were kicking the governors out now and then, and there was almost no power to enforce. So what would happen when they would kick the governor out? He'd go back to England and tell the king, "Oh, they kicked me out." And the king would send another guy who wouldn't tax them basically at all for a while. And then he would kind of find his confidence and start taxing them again, and then they'd kick him out. So it's worth noting that none of the people in the New World stayed in their old country to fight their old ruler, because that's a stupid idea. And they weren't that dumb. So if, if we're going to draw that analogy to the U.S., right, what would that entail? Get out. Right. I mean, and I'm not saying people should or shouldn't. I'm just going to say if we're going to if we're going to march around and pretend like we're wearing three cornered hats back in the late 1700s, uh, let's look at the first step those people took to escape their oppression. Quit telling me what to do, Dave. That's the government's job. (laughs) (laughs) You're trying to tell me what to do. (laughs) Anyway. If, if we're going to march around talking about the revolutionaries and the revolution, I just think uh, a few things should be straight. One, they were not more free after they kicked the king out. Their taxes were higher. The regulations were higher immediately after they got rid of the king because they traded one tyrant 3,000 miles away or whatever for a, a tyrant right at home. Um, inadvertently or otherwise, that's what they did. And then number two is that all the white people in America had already left Europe. They'd gone across the entire ocean to escape oppression first. They did not fight their kings and their rulers on their home turf. Anyway, just wanted to throw that out. Thanks, Dave. Are you saying that George Washington was a tyrant? <laughs> Wait a minute. George Washington basically called himself a tyrant on his way out. So what's right. the solution, well, Dave? What yeah. do we do? I mean, I, I don't know if you got to hear earlier when we started this off, I had mentioned something about Patrick Henry when he said, why stand we here idle? So I was thinking about that same thing. Why are we standing here idle? Is it because we don't know what to do? What do we do? I mean, everyone, we assume, most know, everyone I mean, that listens to the show thinks there's something wrong. I mean, you listen to any radio yeah. program, they call in to say something's wrong. What do we do? So in what way uh, do people want to be free? Because there's a lot of different freedoms. You know, there's financial, there's property ownership, there's uh, civil liberties, right? There's all these sorts of things. And I don't think you can find all of those in one place. You can't you can pick find them. all of them in different places. Right? right. You can you can find financial freedom via, you know, all sorts of international trusts and foreign bank accounts and things like that. And you can find countries that actually have some semblance of property rights. I'm going to drop a little hint and throw, throw this one out that it's not the United States. Um <laughs> You can find places that have better respect for civil liberties, like, uh, I don't know, probably North Korea has better respect for civil liberties than the U.S. in a lot of ways. Kind of joking there, but uh, pretty much any country in the world, um, except for maybe like North Korea and Saudi Arabia and Israel, have better respect for civil liberties and expression of free speech than the United States. So, I mean, what what do you want? You know, that's the question. And then... um, you know, we live in a world where you can fly all over the place. You can transact over the internet. So you can spread your your stuff, you know, your property over a whole bunch of different jurisdictions and and uh, kind of pick the freedoms you want a la carte, as long as you're willing to not look in one singular place for. And you don't even have to vote to do it. That's the great part. I think Josh, the answer to Josh's question, why stand we here idle? It's the fear of the use of force against us. That, and that I think that same fear is where we uh, alleviate that fear by saying, you know, falling back to when they come to get our guns. Or the same fear is why we vote. Well, I think it's a justified fear, though. I mean, look what happened in Anchorage yesterday morning. A guy with a baseball bat got lit up. was shot to death by the Anchorage police because he came at them with a baseball bat. They didn't try to take his gun away. Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. There were no witnesses except for law enforcement. They don't lie. Well, yeah, actually, you know, uh, Cato, I think it was the Cato Institute, which, who I'm not a huge fan of, but I think it was, uh, they had a big paper on, uh, in 2011, the statistics of um, unarmed civilians who were killed by cops versus cops who were killed by civilians. But the number was, it was like 10 to 1 or something like that, the ratio. So, uh, but you can go places in the world where that doesn't happen as much. 
if that's how you gauge freedom. If you don't want to be shot by a cop, you know, there's places you can go. Well, and look what happens here uh, in the United States if somebody out. is getting abused by a policeman. All, all anybody does is they stand around and film it. You go to sir, other... please stop. Yes. Sir. Please stop, sir. Please don't tase me, bro. You go anyplace don't else. Don't tase me, bro. Go anyplace else, what happens? The police get maced. Right. Yeah, yeah I think we're all know, talking about... Would... Sorry. We're looking at an article, for, for yeah. an article about this on Father uh, Vigilante. A couple couple weeks ago, these cops, uh, he was on a scooter on his way into uh, this place he hangs out, Mangos, which is a beach cafe. And um, the cops turned on their light behind him, so he just ignored it. And uh, they followed him all the way there. And so he, he went from kind of a shady part of town into a, an upscale part of town. And as he got into the upscale part of town, they turned their lights off because they didn't want to piss anybody off. And then when he got out of his car and they approached him, um, all these people kind of surrounded him. And, and the cops felt huge social pressure against trying to screw this white guy out of, you know, 100 pesos or whatever. And he ended up not not saying anything because he hadn't harmed anybody. So a very different situation than you'd have in the U.S. Just as an example. And how about uh, I'm sure you read. I'm sure you read uh, yeah. Dollar Vigilante here this last week, where he had the one on the guns, and he had the specific examples of what happens when the government abuses its power in other countries, and it showed several different pic- pictures. Like this one, the police was macing a bunch of people, and someone stole the, the mace back and maced all the police. Right. Or in uh, Chile, right. when they pushed the police bus over because they were trying to stop some uh, people that were protesting or I don't even remember what the other one was and then right below it was showing the uh, you know the the angry Americans all sitting down peacefully protesting with a cop just walking by macing all of them right in the face and you have all these other Americans standing there taking pictures of it but that was Occupy Wall Street people they deserve to get maced right so his point was don't say you're going to get your yeah. I would mace those guys. Example, those, the just Occupy guys. Go ahead. Those Occupy guys with their with their tent on the grass in the uh the Veterans Memorial Park, right? Mm-hmm. And uh what do we get? We get a bunch of people on the radio saying, Oh yeah, kick them out, they're gonna kill the grass. What a joke. More concerned about the grass than their liberty. <laughs> yeah, and they're they're telling them to get off the grass and then they're telling you to vote and don't do anything else. Go out and vote, but don't kill the grass in my park protesting. Pathetic. It is. That was the whole point of that whole uh, article was the he had written, a friend of his had written an article about uh, people saying when they come, basically the article said when they come to take your guns, you'll gladly give it to them. You won't resist. And people, all these people wrote him back and said, oh, they'll pry my gun from my dead hands and blah, blah, blah. And they were like, yeah, you're right, they will. <laughs> and... <laughs> And his point was, really? <laughs> you don't do anything now. You don't do anything. Yep. And just like you said, when somebody goes out and actually protests, like the Occupy Wall Street guys, we scream and yell because they're killing the grass. We don't do anything. They, the cops go up, they shoot people, they spray people, the government oppresses us, and all we do is say, please stop, sir, and take pictures. No one does anything here. They'll never stand up for their rights. It's like when a sheep gets out of the corral and all of the rest of the sheep point and say, hey, farmer! Sheep out, sheep out, go get them. They will, too, do something, Josh, when they come to take their guns like they did in Germany and Australia and all those uh, places. Okay, we're going back to that. No, they didn't. They never came to take the guns. The people are glad they gave them up, and they will here, too. Dave, when is somebody going to come and get you and bring you back into the corral? I'll go get them. Uh, I don't know. All right, maybe we'll, we'll send somebody well, no, out to go. Have to be a... We'll send somebody. Well, you know what? They, they went after, what, Wesley Snipes, right, because he didn't pay his taxes. And so he's now persona non grata. Right. Yeah, there's ways to go about that. He, uh, I mean, you can do it totally on the up and up, completely legal. Um, you just have to make sure to uh, dot your I's and cross your T's. So it's not even, you know, a big revolutionary step or anything. It's just kind of walking away. But, uh, I mean, it is a big step to, to walk away from something you know. I think that's mostly what people are afraid about. There was an article on International Man that said the the state is not the enemy. Individual procrastination is. Mm. You know, you have all these ways of avoiding the state or walking away from the state totally available right now. Do you think that phenomenon Um, was um, was uh, the downfall of the Jews? Yeah, and that's what the uh, the article went through. He was 
talking about this book where uh, this guy was writing about the history there and all the, the writing on the wall, and it was plain as day for everybody to see. And everybody's like, oh, you know, tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow or next week or a month from now. And um, eventually you don't have tomorrow. But, you know, right now there's probably years, but it takes time to do things. And uh, if you wait until you have to do something, you're going to be in a lot worse shape than if you do something ahead of time. And if you, you go out and wave signs and do all the voting junk, uh, that's time away from actually making a change in your life for the better. But you have to start and you have to do something and you have to have some sort of direction. And that's a scary thing for most people. And that's the whole reason why they don't do anything, though, because they think they can vote. I mean, yeah, isn't it? Maybe. I mean, I think, I think, I think voting. Uh, I think they know they need to do something, and I, I think they know that voting is a joke and it's not going to make a difference. Um, but it, uh, it's a really easy way. You know, you go out and vote and say, "Wow, well, I tried." You know, what the hell? I they did my duty. Me. I cast my ballot. Yeah. That's right. I got my so sticker. It's something. It's, actually, it's like it's like giving to uh, you know a homeless guy in the street or whatever or somebody starving and and uh, give you know ten bucks to an organization instead of helping the guy out who you see <laughs> this wages your guilt if you feel better without actually having to do anything I think that's what voting is make you feel like you're doing your job you know doing your part for freedom without actually doing anything so what can we do Dave for freedom uh, we've gone through it we've gone through it a hundred times on the show I mean, there are so many things you can do. You can uh, you can travel. You can get a passport. You can um, open a foreign bank account. You can buy property overseas. You can start an online business so that you're not dependent on a uh, check every two weeks from an employer who may or may not lay you off at any moment. Uh, there's all sorts of things you can do. You the can not is vote. Ever. Voting is not voting is not on the list. That's a waste of your time. You know those little stickers um, that they have, they hand out when you say I voted today that you put on your little shirt, whatever. I'm going to have some made in time for this next election, and anyone who wants them, you can put them on your jacket. I didn't vote today. <laughs> yeah, I sat, oh, I you, sat are, home and you are so going to get beat up by somebody if you do that. <laughs> They're going to accost you in the street and beat the crap out of you if you wear one of those buttons on voting day, Josh. A whole bunch of voters are going to surround you with sticks and just beat you like a big pinata, which really so shows what voting the, is. The that's the essence of voting. Right. You right. have a different opinion than me, so I'm going to lock you in a cage. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> that's the essence of it. Yep. Oh, golly, I, I miss you, so Dave. Be quite honest with them. Somebody needs to go get you back <laughs> in the corral. <laughs> Thanks for calling yeah. in. Well, Four, five, eight, yep, dog. Thank you, guys. Is the you you guys want to, 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 we got all of our lines are on hold. Do you want to go back to the phones or you want to say something else? Let's hit them. 458-TALK I mean, is the number. <laughs> Good morning, caller. Who's this? State your name. This is Jim. Am I on? Jim, you're on. Go ahead. Hi. Well, I've been waiting through David, and he said a lot of what I was going to say. It was great to hear him. Is this um, Jim and Kenai? Yes, Jim and Kenai. Hey, thanks for calling, man. Well, I uh, finished with the goats. Um <laughs> So liberty is not a, pro a project for those with high time preference. And, um, you know, growing up in the church, you hear a lot of the New Testament explained away as, yeah, you know, Jesus said that his kingdom is not of this earth, but that doesn't apply to us because we're in the United States, and really it, it kind of is. But, you know, that's all not true. There's a lot of what do we do now that's, that Jesus and the apostles talk about. You know, our citizenship is not here. You're either... You're either going to be, you know, I got mine, pull up the ladder, which is, you know, mm -hmm. one, one way to do it, or you can be a missionary to, to the lost, and, um, you know, that's a lot harder. Uh, but that's, what do you do now? Um, you're a missionary to the lost, and you're a missionary to the lost Christians who are worshiping, who are worshiping the state, thinking they're worshiping Jesus, or you're a missionary um, to, to the people who, who don't believe in Jesus just in order to uh, make their life on this earth better. Um, but I, I think what you know, you can either alleviate your own your own pain, or you can view yourself as as, as a missionary uh, amongst the heathen, and um, that's kind of how I find peace with it. Are you saying me and Josh are missionaries? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> every every week you're out here proclaiming the good news of liberty from tyranny. Hmm. Well, we do yeah. believe in Jesus. I, I did like ultimately. I did like that analogy that. Um, 
people view the state as their Jesus, and they don't even realize it. And I see that more than anything else. And that was that was the most that was probably the most depressing thing. When I I, I I even wonder, you know, was I really worshiping the right Jesus for all those years? Because, uh, you know, it, he had the right name, but he had a lot of different characteristics. He likes to kill Muslims, I know that. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what Jesus said. You know, if they don't receive your word, call in the drones. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, told by someone yesterday that uh, Jesus never said anything against the soldiers. In fact, he praised them. That never... He, he told them not to oppress people, uh, not to, not to hurt people, and not to complain about their wages. A lot of it is, is you know, the, the state is, and and the way to replace it is to change the society out from underneath it. Uh, most most of the obey the state stuff has to do with, you know, don't get your don't uh, you're not a citizen here, but you're respectful of the people who are, so that you you don't hurt your testimony in front of them. You don't you don't blemish blemish your king, and you don't blemish your witness. And, uh, you know, the apostles were very careful to say, to say, we're going to do what's right. We, we show respect to you as the fact that the other people here respect you. You, you are, you are the, the lords of the earth, so to speak, but you're not, you know, we show you courtesy, but it's not because we were your subjects. We're, we show you courtesy in order to not harm our witness. Well, I got a question for you, Jim. Jesus was arrested, right? Oh yeah, and Paul he checked out the he didn't check out the local hotel he checked out the local prison. <laughs> and uh, since Jesus was elected, that automatically makes him a bad person. Oh, absolutely, Arrested. absolutely. He obviously did something wrong, or Pilate wouldn't have put him on trial, and he did. I mean, he had a trial. He had a trial. I'm pretty sure the people screamed for that trial. Yeah, yeah. The law and order crowd don't realize how they've slit their own throats. <laughs> and having been one of them, I you know. A lot of this is is a lot of uh, a lot of my current view is is you know penance or hair shirt for uh, my previous mistakes. <laughs> so right on. Well, thanks guys. I gotta go. Nice. I appreciate the call, man. Thanks That's for awesome. calling. Thanks Brian. for listening in Kenai too. Four five eight talk is the number. Good Solid morning. Dude. This is Patriots Lament. Who's on our phone? This is Brian. Brian, go ahead. You're talking about what you can what you can do. And what this guy just said was, was spot on. You have to, in your own life, uh, kind of like what Beck's been saying, you have to be the change you want to see. And uh, you have to live freedom in your heart and in your mind. And you have to decide that you're going to be free in whatever ways you can. And because governments come and go, men of power come and go, but freedom is a concept that will never die and there will always be people that are free somewhere. And the, the first thing <clears throat> I'll tell you about freedom is the freest people I've seen and in, in my extensive travels around the world are the people who have nothing. Because if you stop and think about it, what I hear a lot on this program and other uh, national shows is people talking about their property and their property rights and their right to have a business. You know, it, it's not very common uh, in the population at large for a person to have a business worldwide. It's more common in the United States. We're more of a nation of entrepreneurs and independent individuals. But do you know if you, if you don't divest yourself of uh, this idea that you have to have more and more and more and uh, start thinking about uh, how you can live with less, and I'm not saying that to accommodate the current political climate and, and what we perceive as the loss of freedom in this country. Um, if you're if you're stuck on having uh, a certain amount of material goods, yeah, you're going to feel what you perceive to be a loss of freedom. And I don't, I'm not saying that what's going on in this country is right. It's absolutely wrong and appalling. But they had, during the Cold War, at the very beginning of it, the UN actually came out and created something called the World Passport. And I don't think, I had never heard of this until a few years ago. And the reason I bring that up is because if you want to be free, um, uh, again, it's something defined in degrees, but a U.S. passport is not going to make you as, as free as some other some of the other nations' passports out there. And the world passport 
is one you can hold in concurrence with other passports. I haven't it, heard of that one. Yep. Um, there's two things that uh, that I think are really interesting that you never hear about, and one is the Anti-Communism League or the Anti-Communist League, which was a league of nations formed that came out and said, we are absolutely against the evil of... Uh, of this uh, tyrannical form of, of governance. Uh, so the Anti-Communism League, and there was a whole bunch of other anti-tyranny, um, anti-oppression type things going on there within the, the international community and the UN itself, and one of them was the development and issuance of these world passports, which were designed to allow people to who were in these countries who could not get exit visas from places like Russia and East Germany and the satellite countries, they were not officially allowed to leave, most of them. They had to be members of the state or the, uh, the, the college system to get out. So the people who did manage to swim across a river or a lake or walk across a snowy boundary into a, another country, they didn't have anything, but they were, but they were free. And for that, they were immensely grateful, but they weren't able to really go anywhere because they weren't citizens of any country. So they provided this world passport, and at that time, all of the free countries in the world recognized the world passport. The world passport still exists. You can still obtain one, and it allows you to travel to, oh, I don't know, probably about 40 different countries that recognize that that passport. You are not a citizen of any particular state. You have a passport that allows you to travel to certain portions of the world, um, and uh, that's what your freedom is, is what you think you are inside. Hmm. Well, we'll check that out next and uh, report on that. Appreciate the information. That's the, We're definitely always talking about getting as many passports as you can. Yeah. We'll check that one out. I've been hearing Glenn. I just want to take a jab at Glenn back because I really don't like him. <laughs> I've been hearing him say that quote, too, and he kind of just plays it off like it's his own. But that's actually a famous quote from Aaron Burr. Be the change you want to be. Or be the change you want to see. Right. That's Aaron Burr, not Glenn Beck. Glenn be Beck. the change you want to be. We got one more dude hanging on. All right, let's see if we can try to get it there. Good morning, caller. Quickly. Quickly, uh, this Al, I just had to. I couldn't help but comment on Dave and his choice of freedoms and his and his thought that he had the right or the freedom to travel, but only after he got permission from getting a passport and. And he said it himself after he had all the I's and T's and stuff dotted correctly, he was allowed to travel. Well, yeah, he doesn't want to get shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not much of a freedom if you're asking to, to travel. Well, it's not much of a freedom if you're dead either. Yeah. Thanks, Hal, for the call. Thank you all for listening. Check us out online, patriotslament.blogspot.com, and we will see you next week right here on KFAR's Local Talk Radio.